Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we will be making a shooting gallery using a plane tracker, so real world space. And we'll be just trying to get an idea of using countdown, timers and random values to generate a sort of simple game concept. So basically over the last few days I've been looking at various countdown timers out there and I'll link a few down in the description down below that you can download that I found on Gumroad and from other creators. Uh, but I'm just going to go through a basic setup for you uh, initially because we're going to need to obviously get the countdown timer created in this video. And then we'll start to implement the resources and assets that we require to build up this conceptual target based game. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and open up my patch editor in a new project. So I've got a blank project here and I'm going to need to start to create my countdown timer. Now this timer is based on a uh, fantastic um, sort of project that I found uh, and it's freely available and again I'll link it down in the description down below. Uh, I can't remember who the original creator was sadly because I've seemed to have lost the details. The post that I found the link from has disappeared. Um, but the description and the the, uh, the link to that download will be available down below or you can recreate it from this because it was available for free so we can recreate it without any uh, issues. So first off I'm going to add an animation patch. And this animation patch will be a kind of running clock essentially. So we're going to link from the progress to a multiply. So this will basically take each of the values along the time of one. We're also now going to right click and add a subtract. And we're going to link the multiply to the second input on the subtract like so. We're now going to right click again and add a switch. And we're just going to link the completed from the animation to the turn off on this second switch here. We're going to now add a loop animation and link this to the switch enable. I'm going to click on the progress and add a multiply and a divide. Now you don't necessarily need these, these are uh, a sort of give us some more co more controls if we wanted to go in this later and adjust these so it wants to multiply by two but keep the division by one. We could do that, this is just for future proof until we can adapt it later. We don't actually need these values for this to work at this stage, so these two here are optional. We're now going to add an add and we're going to link this divide into the second input on the add. I'm going, to right I'm going to drag from the subtract at the top and add a round and link this round to the t top input on my add value down here. Now what I quite like to do also is I quite like to from the subtract just to give more options later on I'm going to also add a multiply and a divide. We're not going to be using these uh, at the moment, but these are here. So if we wanted to later on, uh, we could take our input time and times it by two or divide it by two. And that will either speed up or slow down our timer. Because as you'll come to realize that when we link this to our transi frame transitions, our animation, uh, we will play the frame depending on the second that we're on. But if we use this multiply or divide, we can actually increase or decrease that time that is given to the user. So this is just a little uh, easy way of overwriting the default time or frames if you haven't got enough frames in your animation, for example. So now I have this basic setup done. I'm just going to just scroll down one more second and just add one more value before I do because I knew I forgot something. And I'm going to link this value to the duration, to the subtract, and to the multiply values that are currently not connected. I'm now going to just zoom out for a second, uh, select all of this patch, right click and create a group, and we'll call this 
countdown. I'm going to click on this group, go to group properties. And we're going to just need to add a few inputs. So I'm going to add two inputs, well, three inputs technically. So three inputs. So our first input is going to be our start. And this will be our Boolean. Actually, no, we have that as a pulse. That makes more sense. Because we're going to have this firing, so a pulse will make more sense than a boolean. A boolean is more an on-off state. A pulse is more, it fires through. We're going to add a reset. This is also going to be a pulse. And then we're going to have our last one, which is going to be our timer. We're now going to go to outputs and add two outputs. We're going to keep these as number values. At the top one is going to be our timer value. And this is just going to give us to the value of two places. So I'm just going to go like that to indicate two. Our second value is going to give us to the value of five places. And again, we're not going to be using the second timer, but it's there again as a redundancy if we wanted to do it in other effects later on. So sometimes we'll set things up without the intention of actually using it at the time, but just so we can always go back to it and not add to it if we need to later on. There we go. So here we should have our timer set up like so. Now if I go back into that group, if I click on the little expand button here, I should have these three purple options and two yellows. I'm just going to make sure I've just realized I've typed rest instead of reset. Mr. E. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to add, link these up now. So my timer value is going to be linked to my round. And my timer value to the five spaces is going to be added to my add down here. I'm going to link my start to the play on my animation and to the turn on on my switch. I'm going to link the reset to the reset on my animation and to the turn off on my switch. No, sorry. Um, reset to the reset on my loop animation, sorry. Not to the switch, to the reset. So to here and to here. And just link my timer to the value like so. Now if I come back out of it, we should now have this all fully set up. So when we start injecting things into this countdown timer, we should start to see the effect happen. So I'm just going to import some assets from my computer quickly, just to uh, show this in action. So what I've already done is I've just created these 19 frames here. I'm just going to import 1 to 19. I don't need the zero image. And these are just little pie charts with colored in segments. I'm going to hit open. So, and one thing I came to realize when I first did this is when I actually imported them, because the way I've saved these name conventions is actually incorrect, that I came, came to the issue where it would go 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, etc. And it actually wouldn't play the animation in the right order. So I'm just going to quickly spend a moment or two to rename these. And I'm going to rename these from A, B, C, D, etc. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I've now renamed all my textures appropriately. So the thing to remember is because we're going to be working with an countdown rather than something that counts up, we need to actually our frames or our images to be the opposite way around to the way we'd expect it to be. So I actually want my last frame to be the first frame in my sequence. So in my case, the last frame for me would be a fully black circle. That in my case here would be A rather than actually the last letter, which would be in this case S. So I want to reverse the order of my frames so it plays in the right way around. Because we're counting down the frames rather than counting up the frames in this case. So once I have all my images imported and named correctly, 
and I'd recommend going with a similar naming convention of ABCDEFG, etc., rather than numerically. I'm going to just select all those frames. I'm going to change their type to be a texture sequence. I'm just going to call this my countdown texture. I'm going to add a animation sequence. And I'm going to call this countdown sequence. I'm going to collect my countdown sequence, choose my texture to be my countdown textures. And I'm just going to quickly add a rectangle. So this will automatically create us a canvas and a rectangle image. I'm going to create a new material. Rename this material to be countdown mat. And then choose this texture for this countdown mat to be my countdown sequence. So as you should see, you should see this sort of animation playing of my circle filling up uh, on a loop. So just to show that this countdown kind of is doing something, I'm going to go to my countdown sequence. I'm going to select the current frame and I'm just going to link this up to my timer value here. So at the moment, this is not going to do anything because I haven't got any uh, values to kick it off. So I'm just going to quickly add a screen tap just to highlight this in action and link this to my start. And now this is where we need to kind of be aware of how many frames we've created because the number of frames that we've created will be the number, will be the time that we have available to us. So this is why I was on about the multiply and divide by having those in this group patch, we can always manipulate that time uh, more than what the number of frames we've created are. Um, but this is, uh, for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. So I'm just going to type in 19. And now if I go to simulate touch and tap screen, we should have this countdown that's counting down each of those frames. So you can see it's changing the current frame value here as this number is decreasing from 19 to zero. And this is a, this, this is the basic countdown sort of setup. Uh, I'm actually just gonna reduce this by one frame. So I'm actually gonna have that as 18 and just uh, restart. There we go. So you can see what we're trying to achieve. Now this at the moment itself is just a visualization of the time that we're gonna have available to us. And we're gonna be exploring the setup of how we add in the AR objects, then the tapping and the countdown, linking it all together in the next part of this video. And like I said, the some links to some various countdown patches will be available in the description down below. So you, if you don't want to recreate it yourself, you can just find one from many of the talented creators out there on the Spark AR community page. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in part two.